Alright folks, welcome back. I'm Heroic Nerd and today we are doing another Atlas Comics Classic. This time we're doing um, Western stories. This is a... Uh, how do I put this? It's a double feature. We are doing a double feature. This time we are doing Kid Cody Gunfighter and the Comanche Kid. Who are kind of similar but kind of different. Here, let's take a look. They killed Japa, but I'll even the score, I swear it. A new hero, a new story, birth of a gunman. There he is. And introducing down here in the corner, the Renegade, who's apparently some kind of Native American individual. So, these stories are alright, they're decent, they're not the best, but this is a twofer. It's a single issue called Western Stories, or Western Action. And this is the only one. This is the only one that they made. These, the stories for either of these characters, neither of them are continued. So, we're going to get into it. Enjoy it while you can, because it's not coming back. You know what I mean? It's just, this is it. <laughs> this is all there is. So, let's savor the flavor while it lasts. Alright, so we're starting off with Kid Cody, Gunfighter. This is a story of a youth who went west and became a man, and then the man became a legend. It all happened about a century ago. Wyoming is even more scenic than I expected. Yes, it sure beats anything back east. When will we reach town, Pa? Soon, son. Then we'll rent a rig and drive out to the farm. The farm? Do they own a farm? Hey, this was uh, by Larry Lieber did this. He wrote it, at least. Interesting. Um, birth of a bad man. There it is. The town of Cody. It looks so wild. Don't fret, Sarah. If we don't bother folks, they'll likely not trouble us. Oh, man. I don't know about that. These look like some, uh, some pretty rough characters. But in a frontier town, trouble needs no invite. Well, if it ain't the hero of the West, mind your manners, boy. Don't you know old Logan once toted the meanest gun in the state? So my pappy told me, but all Logan can tote now is a whiskey bottle. Okay, which one's Logan? And he don't hang on to that too good. Okay, the drunk. The drunkard is Logan, who was apparently at one point the meanest gun in the state. I have my doubts. But my opinion doesn't matter. So mad old man, can't you stay on your feet? He weren't too purty before, but now he's plumb ugly. Ha ha. What an idiot. Oh, John, the way those bullies are tormenting that old man. It's shocking. It's shocking, but not unusual out here in the West. Because there are no laws in the West. How many times do I got to tell you people? It ain't right, Pa. No matter where it happens. Look at his suit. This suit looks interesting. Doesn't it look like 70s chic? Like even his his hair is kind of like permed almost into an afro. It's kind of weird. Like what the hell, man? What are you doing? Here, mister, let me help you up. Don't ever help people. Ever. That's heroism, goddammit. That's the name of this channel. That's why we're here, folks. We're here for heroism. Here, mister, let me help you up. The name's Logan. Thanks, son. Well, look at that. Yesterday's news gets rescued by a tenderfoot. There was a time when I didn't need no rescuing, when I could have handled a dozen galoots like you. Sure, but that time has come and went, Gramps. Now you're nothing but mouth and whiskey. So long, Mr. Logan. I'll see you around. That's the end of it? That's the end of it. So he helps him up. He could have got up on his own, but the guy helps him up. And now we're stuck here, waiting for this goddamn plot to get off. There's not that many pages in this one, what? 21 pages in this one, we're already on page 4. You better step to it, motherfucker. Miles later, cruelty becomes memory as the Corbett family reaches their destination. There's the farm, it's lovely. Uncle Ed kept it in good shape. My brother was a hard worker, he left us a legacy to be proud of. 
Nice. Let me guess. Is it going to burn to the ground? I fucking hope it burns to the ground. That'd be fucking awesome. But even as the new tenants adjust to the rigors of their rustic existence, there's water on that land, water by my cattle need. Oh, shit. Here we go. Conflict, finally. Corbett wouldn't sell the spread at any price, but maybe his brother will be easier to convince. He should be. I hear he's just a greenhorn from back east. No problem. Dude's got no spine for fighting. I know I've killed enough of them. Simmer down, Chino. Don't get gun happy. Not till we've tried words. Mount up. We're going calling. Oh yeah, you gotta try them words. We gotta try words first. Then we can use the guns, but first we gotta try words. Looks like we got company, Pa. They're probably neighbors. Put some coffee on, Sarah. But these neighbors want far more than coffee. My name's Blackwell. I need this farm for the water rights. Your brother wouldn't sell, and I hope you have better sense. Ed and I were cut from the same cloth. We always kept what's ours. Sorry, Mr. Blackwell, but my family and I are here to stay. I'd think on that, Corbett, if I were you. Yeah, your brother died of natural causes. But you might not be so lucky. That's enough. I don't like threats. Get off my land. That's right. This is America, goddammit. Kinda. Like. It's like half America. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, friend, I'm going. But my boys will be back. Yeah, count on it. John, I'm frightened. I'm a woman and I'm frightened. Don't be. They're most likely just bluffing. They're not bluffing, dude. This is a superhero origin story. They're not bluffing. Days follow without incident as the Corbettes embrace the tasks of their new life. Thanks for helping me load these supplies, Mr. Logan. No need to thank me. I've worked lots harder for the price of a drink. What did you do before? I mean, what were you? I was a fast and fancy gun, the best in the territory. Trouble was, I had to prove it every day. But triggering is a young man's trade, and when I got old, fear set in and whiskey took over. And your eye? That happened later, in some forgettable place during a senseless brawl. And while talk grows into friendship between youth and age. We've waited long enough. The boss wants us to make our play. Let's ride. Here it comes. Finally, finally, somebody's gonna fucking die. Get off my land, all of you. Mister, I've had all this mouth I'm gonna take. Talk's over. Torture, boys. No, don't. Stop. Not the farm that I inherited from my dead brother. Make us, Corbett. Make us stop. Oh, shit. So long, sodbuster. Oh, my God. He's a sodbuster? Gee, well, if I had known he was a sodbuster, I wouldn't have been so sympathetic. Goddamn sodbuster. That has got to be the, the sad... That's the most miserable goddamn insult I've ever heard flung. Whatever. Oh, shit. I didn't even look at this panel here. This This girl is... So she's not doing well. Is she inside the house? I, oh man, I don't think she's going to make it out. She didn't. She didn't fucking make it. It's done. Let's head back. Yeah, I could use a drink. Oh man, that's that's all. The, look at this panel. Look at it's beautifully constructed. The the hand burning in the foreground and then in the midground you've got the grandfather dead and then in the background they're just walking away like a bunch of cold-blooded murderers. That's that's a beautiful panel. That is very beautiful. Very cinematic. And as Killers for Hire flee, an unsuspecting youth prepares to return home. How about coming back with me, Sam? I'd be happy if you'd join us for dinner. Thanks. I ain't had home cooking since I can't remember when. But as man and youth reach their destination, eager anticipation is shattered by nightmare reality. What in tarnation? Oh god, no. No, no! Ma! Dad! Tom! Don't go there. Stay back. 
yeah, is this going to be, I don't know. I feel weird because we've only got a few pages left. I'm not sure he's going to get his revenge. Let me go. My folks, I must help them. It's too late. Nobody can save them now. I'm sorry, son. I truly am. <gasps> They're dead. Sob. Dead. <laughs> and a youth. Suddenly, shockingly, painfully thrust into manhood, now does what men have always done. He buries the flesh of his past, but not the memory, nor the grief, nor the searing sense of loss. Who did it, Sam? Who murdered my folks? Only one scum had reason to. Brett Blackwell. He didn't light the torch, but he gave the order. All right. Blackwell won't get away with this. He'll hang for killing my mother and father. No. That's the rough part. There's no proof Blackwell did it. And the law can't touch him. Well, if the law can't, then I will. I'm going to kill him with a gun of the man he murdered. No. You're too young. Too inexperienced. Even without his hired guns, Blackwell could take you easy. I'll get my experience. Sending Blackwell to Boot Hill. Don't be a fool. You know nothing of gun fighting. You won't stand a chance. A chance in a shootout. This is great. Actually, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm loving it. This is going to be like another... This is like another Barbarian's Tale. Like, uh, these double features are always really good. Your folks didn't raise you to die before your time, and if I can't help it, you won't. Okay, you're set on vengeance, and you'll have it, but not just yet. I know an old shack in the hills. We'll be safe there till we're ready to make our play. Just as soon as it is real soon. Is this? Oh my god. It goes on. I love it. I'm loving this so far. I'm too old and unsteady for gunplay now, but in my past days, I was the best. Oh, wait, that's the wrong voice. Hold on. Uh, go back. I lose track of voices sometimes. And I am to teach you everything I ever known, starting now. Try and hit that small rock there. It's, it's not as easy as it looks. Nothing ever is. Don't fire so fast. Aim careful. Don't jerk the trigger. Squeeze it. That's it. You learn fast. You're a natural, Tom. A natural. Reload and do it again. Days pass as the grueling hours of practice turn a novice into a deadly gunfighter. Whoa. Look at him go. Look, I got them all. You're good. Almost as good as I was. Now you know it all, son. You're right up there with the best of them. Are those guns, are they? Yeah, the Colts I carried when I plied my trade, I'm giving them to you. Thanks, Sam. I'll try to wear these as well as you did. You will, because I'll be around to make sure that you do. Let's ride. Oh, that's beautiful. He has a mentor, and his mentor taught him to kill people. I love it. Mm, mwah. Love this story. Hours and miles later, the Vengeance Seekers meet their first challenge. Look, it's the Corbett Kid and Sam Logan. Those men, the Blackwell's trigger boys. They're driving cattle all over my land. A greenhorn and a has-been, ha! It's a cinch, blast them. Oh, no, you ain't blasting shit, motherfucker. Y'all getting blasted. Bam, bam, bam. The kid handles those irons like they're part of him. And after the smoke of battle clears, I was lucky. He only wounded me. He killed all the others. Well, I don't believe it. Nobody can be that good. If you're a lion to me, ooh. Kid Cody is that fucking good. Blackwell, your ass is done. This, this is your ticket? I'm snapping your ticket, motherfucker. All right, let's see. Minutes tick by tensely while a hired killer waits. Waits until, wait. Simmer down, Blackwell. 
No matter how fast the squirt is, I'll take him. I always do. And I was wondering if you'd be fool enough to show. Where's Blackwell? Forget him. I'm the man you gotta outdraw to make it through this day. Oh, well, I'll outlive this day, Chino. Count on it. Count on what? The brag of the town drunk? He's no longer a drunk, and I'm no longer a greenhorn. Anytime you're ready, mister. Holy shit. Oh, the drunk is gonna... He's gonna battle the drunk. Don't blast Chino yet, Tom. Before he dies, I want him to see how much I've reformed. Lesson, of course, he wants to flush out any polecat that might be lying in ambush. Uh-oh. He threw, he threw the alcohol and then... Hold on, I'm getting a little confused. Up there, Tom. I see him. The old geezer outfoxed us. Now it's straight gunplay all the way. Chino's pulling iron. Tom's done for. Unless... Oh shit, is this going to be a sacrifice play? Drop, Tom. Drop. Right, boss man. <gasps> he missed. You sure did. Wham! But I didn't. What, did you get him? Is that a bullet hole? Oh, thud. Took his ass straight down, bop. Flopped his ass. You did it, son. You got the man who killed your folks and you paid him off in full. But it's gonna cost you. I know, Sam. Blackwell wasn't top dog in these parts and the law won't let his death go unpunished. From here on out, I'll be on the run. A man with a price on his head. The days ahead will be hard and dangerous, but you won't be alone. I'll be right alongside you. But it was my choice. It's my grief. Why should you buy into it? I taught you the use of a gun, and it made you what you are. I can't run out on that. And thus begins the saga of the fugitive from Cody, Wyoming, the young outlaw who even now is spoken of as Kid Cody. All right, not bad. I like it. He's he's cool. He's a cool guy. He's got his partner. His partner is a drunk. You know, he shoots pretty good. He's a young guy. It's nice. I, I love it. I can't wait to see the next issue. I'm kidding. It's a joke. There is no other issues. This is it. It's over. Moving on. In the untamed west of yesteryear, a gravel-voiced old man reminisces to his grandchild. Now this tale, we fear that weak of heart. It's a story of sacrifice, hardship, and courage. But suddenly, the narrative is interrupted as... What in tarnation? Gramps! It's people! Yeah, they're people. They kicked in the door. What is what is it? It's the Crowley, boys. What do you varmints want? Shut up. We'll do the John. Yeah, you just listen. We heard you sold some cattle. We want to take our cut of the take. You're local. You ain't getting nothing out of me, Crowley. You may run bad, dog, but you're... But out here, you're just... I don't know if this looks weird to you guys, but it looks weird to me. Now I told you to shut up. Maybe he needs more than telling. Yeah, I reckon you're right, brother. Bam! Took his ass out. Grandpa, are you alright? You should have paid up, old man. Now we're gonna have us a barbecue. And you're invited. Uh-oh. <gasps> On a nearby trail rides a solemn man. He's young enough to be called Kid, yet old enough to know that life is no game. Born white and raised as an Indian, the grim-faced loner known as the Comanche Kid. Okay, shit. The Comanche Kid, he's a white guy, but he was raised as an Indian, and this is supposed to make him special or at least give him some kind of power? I don't understand. But... Nobody better flag my ass for cultural appropriation, all right? This was made back in, like, the 70s, so y'all can fucking kiss my ass. Besides, he's probably a badass. Let's see. Is this the one they call Renegade? No, this is Comanche Kid. Whatever. 
Now the kid's aimless writing gains purpose as he spots the crackling flames of a raging fire. That boy below, he needs help! Hmm, no, we should give him a better voice. Swifter than the north winds, his great horse gallops. The fires grow quickly. Faster, Kamesa, or both the boy and man will burn. <laughs> yeah, that's the voice. Uh, a breed! Who are you? Where'd you come from? Do not speak. Save your strength. Oh, Vengeance Trail. That's the story. Vengeance Trail. That's not bad. It's no use. I'm done for. You're too late. I'm a dead man. Killed by varmints that'll go unpunished. No. I will tend your wounds. They will answer to the law. As do all men. Law. There ain't no law and rules in these parts. There's only the rule of guns. You look like an honest fella. Please, take Joey. Take him to Ruby. She's, she, uh. Gramps, don't die, Gramps. Sob. I'm so sad that my grandfather is dying. He has gone to another world. A better life. Now you must be strong. You can honor your grandfather with courage. Poor Grandpa. He was always laughing and smiling. He never hurt nobody. I'll make him pay. Do not let vengeance blind you, young one. You will go to town and tell what has happened. Your sheriff will know best how to deal with the Crowley boys. Oh, he is a white guy. Look at that. He looks kind of like Captain America. With an orphan youth beside him, the Comanche kid heads for the town of Bad Dog. With a long, dusty trail ahead... The kid's mind drifts back over the years to a time when life was filled with warmth and love to a day that will live forever in the mind of the Comanche kid. Should I give him the same voice? Pa, over there, look. Oh no, we've got company. It's son, it's the engines. Suddenly, without warning, without mercy. Ugh, tell the drivers to... Pa! Within seconds, a young boy's childhood is ended by violence and bloodshed. Kill the whites! Death to those who steal our land! I've died, Jesus. On second thought, this comic is remarkably progressive. <laughs> I should just shut up. My sense of humor isn't funny. I already know. You don't have to comment about it. Young though he was, the lad did not whimper, nor did he cringe from the horror that surrounded him. He tried instead with all his strength to fight back, to punish those who had taken those he had loved. I'll kill you. Sniff. Sniff meaning I'm crying. I'll make you pay for what you have done. So help me. But it was futile. The white boy is high-spirited. He would make a brave Comanche. Take him. He will. We will raise this young pup within our tent. No, let go of me, let go. Oh my gosh, you know what? That sounds weird. You're going to kidnap the, the boy and, and keep him inside your tent? But you're a grown-ass man. Care to explain, chief? Nah, I didn't care. But the chief's will was done. That, that sounds suspect as fuck. Ten summers pass and time drove the pain from the orphan's heart. White Eagle has learned well our ways, he has become one of us. Raised by the chief himself, White Eagle was treated no differently than Toriano, the chief's true son. The boys learned together, played together, hunted together. Father, look at the antelope. Your forehead son has killed the bow. The White Eagle is sure and fast. It was my brother who spotted the beast and tracked it. Only the arrow is mine. I am proud of you both, my sons. Even though I technically killed your real father, I'm fucking proud of you. Something about this is really fucked up. I don't know. Do you guys agree? Something about this is sitting wrong with me. More time passes, and White Eagle, lithe young body, grew strong and seems to thrive on the free, untamed life of the Comanches. He learned to hang over the side of his war pony and became an invisible foe to fell buffalo with handmade weapons and to fight in the savage Indian wars. 
But there came a day that will burn forever in White Eagle's memory. It began with a hunt like any other. Today, my brother, we will share more game than ever before. Ha! We will show the other braves what it is like to be the son of a chieftain. When suddenly, what? Oh shit, is that a tiger? Brother, look out! Oh man, look at this horse face. That shit is gonna haunt my nightmares. Look at that fucking thing. It is a tiger. The lion pounced on the helpless warrior while White Eagle hesitated. I don't think that's a lion. Because don't lions have manes? They have a mane. Like, it's like... You know? A tiger is like a... Yeah, a tiger can be a plains beast. But, like, lions are like savannah. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I don't know shit. Brother, help me. Help me. Why can I not move? God of the hunt. Free my arm. What's wrong? Is he paralyzed? Oh, there it is. There's the arrow. In an instant, the shock had passed, regaining his currents. Wide Eagle let fly with an arrow. But it was too late. His brother was dead. Good. You kill he killed your father. He killed your father. You're gonna cry for him? I don't know. Whatever. Tearfully, tenderly, he picked up his brother and returned to the settlement he felt that his hands would be forever stained by the blood shed this day. He knew the Indians and understood their ways, and White Eagle knew he had failed his brother, as if he had, had himself killed Toriano. My heart must close to you, for you have allowed my true son to die. You are no longer of this tribe. You will drift as the sands of the desert you must now cross. They had given him a name. Now they took that name from him. Henceforth, he would be known only as the Comanche Kid. Okay, I'm sorry, but... Yeah, first of all, you didn't kill Toriano. The, the, the tiger did that. You didn't kill him. It was the tiger. Uh, second of all, why are you crying? These people literally killed your entire family. So, whatever, he's a comic book. He's not gonna, he's not gonna explain himself. And ever since that fateful day, I have wandered trying to forget. Trying to forget. One moment of fear. Mister, I think I see their horses. What? The kid puts the past aside as he and Joey enter the town of Bad Dog. Yeah, those are the horses. The polecats that killed Grandpa. The saloon. It looks as if our trail leads to water. Fire water. Fire water? Is that what they call that shit? Boiling? You mean liquor? I mean, it burns, kinda. I've had a hankering for you since I don't remember when, Ruby, and it's time you note it. Let go, Luke. You're drunk. Of course he's drunk. They're always drunk. Drunk, am I? Objectively, yes, you're drunk. Come here, gal. I'm gonna learn you the facts of life. Oh, man, that's... That's a terrible TV show, man. You better get out of there, lady, before he fucking forces you to watch it. You see, I'm a Crowley, and you're nothing but a cheap dance hall entertain... You get your hands off my Aunt Ruby. That's your aunt? Your aunt's a prostitute? Kid. I... Whatever. Do as the boy says. Well, looky here. A filthy half-breed. You come all the way from the reservation just to badmouth me? I say what must be said. Well, y'all's your answer. I've been looking for some worthless trash to pound my fist into. Or blast you off the face of the earth. You have already killed a man this day, an old man, and a defenseless man. You will harm no other men. You are a lonely animal that preys on the weak and helpless. Is this it? He's, he's like an Indian vigilante? Clobber him, Breed! Fix him good! Why do they keep calling him Breed? He's not technically Indian. He's not a half-breed. He's like, he's like pure white, and then the Indians killed his family. Look, it's Luke Crowley mixing with some Indian. Nah, ain't no Indian got that color hair. They're tearing up the town. Someone's got to stop them. He mustn't reach that gun. Let go, you stinking Indian dog, and I'm going to bury you. It's amazing how they went through that window without getting any glass inside of them. Brave words for a killer of old men. I better get ready. Luke's going to need my help. And, oh, nope, guns don't work. He killed him. 
He killed Luke. I've never seen a man move so fast. How did he kill Luke? Wait, well, how did he kill Luke? How is Luke dead? Is Luke dead because you fucking shot him? Because you're just shooting indiscriminately? You filthy breed. You ain't gonna draw another breath. And then the bullet finds its target. Oh good, he got shot. Oh, I am hit. I must get behind cover quickly. Bullets fly, nearly finishing the kid as he lips for safety. How many rooms have you out back? Just a kitchen and a bedroom, but... I won't do no good to hide, son. Crowley owns this town. He can get all the help he wants. He'll kill you for sure. Perhaps I will not be the one to die. Once before danger froze my blood. But never again. But the angry gunman is not the kid's only foe. I am losing much blood, strength, ebbing. He fights against time, growing weaker with each heartbeat. I will redeem my lost honor, prove I am not a coward. Or die in the effort. How did you know that guy was evil? Is he evil? Who the hell is he? The darkness swirls about him. It numbs his brain as his world goes black. Hours pass before the world comes back into focus. Look, he's waking up. Easy. I've treated your wounds, but you must lie still. I am all right. The injury is not severe. You did the town a big favor. Those Crowleys were mean as all get out. I think that's a that's a saying that was lost to time. I only did what had to be done. Now I leave the boy in your care. She doesn't need to take care of me, mister. I can take care of myself. The boy has courage. I hope it never fails him. For when the brave fall, for even a moment, they must ride in shame forever. And with those words, the Comanche kid turns and heads towards a new adventure beyond the horizon. The end! So that was the other Crowley, I guess? This was supposed to be his big redemption moment. He failed to save his brother. So now in this moment, he shoots the bow, which kills the Crowley guy. That's... That's supposed to be the climax of the tale. But, um... Whatever. That's that's fine. This is this one was fine. I kind of like Kid Cody better. Because this one is just full of fucked up shit. Like, the Indians kill his whole family. Then they take him. Then they brainwash him into being one of their own. Then the brainwashing fails. So they kick him out. And then he becomes, like... And then he, like, kills somebody... It's like, there was no heroism in this one. It was all just really fucked up. <laughs> but it's not meant to be. I'm sure it's meant to be beautiful and iconic. And he rides off into the sunset. But no, it's like, no, that's... All of that was pretty fucked up. But <laughs> that's Western stories. And I think, enjoy this. Savor the flavor. View every single panel. Because these are the only Western stories I think I'm going to be able to get through in Atlas Comics. I know there was, wasn't even any more to this. I don't know. Maybe that's something you guys can look into. I haven't found any more Westerns. But, I don't know. If there are any more, send them to me. But, for this one, it's over. So that's it for this one. If you guys liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more, like the video, subscribe to the channel, donate to my Patreon. And uh, until next time, nerds, stay heroic.